With Christmas just right around the corner, if you follow our channel, you'll see that we bought this new Can-Am Defender HD9 model with a cab. So I decided to treat myself with some accessories. So I hopped in the truck, headed north up to Moody Sales in Mars, PA. And something that you need to take in consideration with our customer loyalty program is when you buy a new unit off of them, they give 15% discount on all accessories upfitting your new unit purchased through them only. So let's go around and check out and see what I decided to purchase for this new Can-Am. First thing I purchased, since this is a hard glass cab model, and I'm going to be loading firewood, bales of hay and stuff, is something to protect this back glass. Uh, it, unfortunately, it is hard glass, so if you throw something up into there and it bounces, it's, it's going to shatter, more than likely. So I in, invested in this cab protector. They call it a headache rack. They offer two different models. This one's a lot heavier duty than the other, and it covers more. And while I was up there, you know, we are considered agricultural, so I could put a placard on this and I can drive it back and forth to the other farms, whether it's picking up hay or whatnot. Uh, you have to run a triangle and they suggest having mirrors. So I bought a mirror kit as well for this unit. So we're gonna get into installing this. They said it's very user friendly and I have all my tools laid out. I like to have a nice clean work uh, area here and this is how this stuff come packaged with all the uh, accessories so we're going to tear into this and we're going to start with the headache rack first and then move to the the mirrors all right let's get this stuff laid out exactly what we have here these are the brackets that go into the metal frame and then go down into the bed Directions. I don't know. I'm not one for directions, but we might have to dive into it. What I like to do is just get everything spread out and some stuff when it's easy enough, you can pretty much just figure it out by looking at it. Oh boy, there's a lot of screws. Unfortunately, we're going to have to read the directions here. In here I see some rivets, so hopefully that's nothing very, very important at this point. Because I don't have a rivet gun up here. I might have to run down to the shop and get one. These are going to be the supports, you know, so it doesn't tip over. Okay, so these are all pretty uniform here. We're going to lay these all out. After reading the directions, these plastic pieces go inside here, like so, like so. There's a P7 bolt. They drop down in like so. And they've got some loose play in there. So whenever it lines up into the side of the pockets of the bed, so if it's off a little bit. Tighten these up like so. The description is this faces the back of the bed because of these holes. These are for different accessories. I almost pulled the trigger. They had uh, an accessory for like a chainsaw holder, but it was more than I wanted to pay. I think it was like $160 or something. And I feel like that I can modify something for much less. Now the reason why I went with this headache rack versus the other one, this one, um, MSR on it, I believe was close to $500. And uh, with the discounts and stuff, it was, substantial discount um, is is it covers more the glass you know the other one just had ribs so you know the glass cost seven or eight hundred dollars to replace so like my theory is everybody waits until you bust the glass then you buy this so in, in hindsight I feel like I'm saving myself eight hundred dollars because I'm just gonna nip this in a butt before I break it because I, I know it's gonna happen Especially with having you know young kids helping us and stuff, people throwing rocks or stuff in the back, it, it doesn't take much. It's just it hits, bounces, and then you know eight hundred dollars down the drain. So uh, that's why I chose to uh, go with the more expensive one for more coverage and more durability.
I'm going to use a torque gun here. It's an impact through D wall. It's 10 millimeter for these things here. I'd advise if you don't have any experience with this, you got to watch it. You don't over torque it or break something. So I'm just going to use this to speed things up a little bit, get it a little bit closer on the tightness. So these L-shaped brackets go on the outside and this is what gives it the leverage. You know, I mentioned earlier about a rivet gun. I don't have one up here, so I'll get one, but those are just rubber stoppers that go up and protect the cab if you throw something and it really slams up so it doesn't hit the cab and break the window. So that's something that's not really a necessity right now. I can still get this unit all in place here. So I have all this hardware a little bit loose so you can drive all this stuff down. Get a rubber mallet so you don't mess up the finish. And then we'll, there's a retainer clamp that goes down underneath here that you tighten it and that keeps it from wiggling back and forth. So it does call for two bolts on each side of this. This is where you have to get a drill. I believe it's a quarter inch bit. And you measure down and you drill through and you tighten it through there to hold that. I do believe that is necessary if you're gonna use this as far as a toll rack. They do offer an accessory for this um, actual headache rack that carries tolls and stuff. So you could potentially get a lot of weight on it. Me particularly, I'm just worried about protecting the glass. But those rubber grommets I was telling you about, they're right here. Uh, I do not have a rivet gun up at the farm property, so I'm gonna have to get one from work, but they just pretty much go up on top of this headache rack. So if you slam it down real quick, it hits off this cab just to protect it in case something flexes. So I'm gonna measure this out and run a pilot hole through here to see what's all involved here. I did take some measurements and it also comes with a template inside there that you can cut out with scissors and lay it in there so you can drill down through. So I'm gonna do mine with a measurement here. Measured five and a half down from there. It was three quarters of an inch over. So we're gonna run a test hold through there and hopefully we hit that, that mark. So we hit the one hole here. I'm just gonna put one hole on each side. Like I, I had to pound this in like a big wedge. So I believe with my um, three points 
of connection here that this is going to be plenty for what I'm using it for. But I just wanted to show an example of what it took to drill this down. And there is a template. Uh, you know, I went one step farther and just used a tape measure, you know, benchmarks off. And then five and a half down from that point, three quarters in. And I hit dead center right on a hole there. So we'll tighten that up and I'm going to hit this other side. So we hit this side here too. Uh, you know, while I'm at it, I may throw the other ones in just because, you know, I'm here, but uh, I really don't think you need it. This is also tightened up with that 10 millimeter. <clears throat> and it's plastic, so you can't go crazy on it or you'll break it. I mean, this is. You know, unfortunately, this is the world we live in. Everything's plastic, so I wouldn't go real crazy on tightening it. Um, I'm going to tighten that one over there. So I decided to do it the full blown way that the directions suggest. Uh, it's that famous saying, if you're not gonna do it right, don't do it at all. So I just figured I better just put this exactly how they recommend from the factory. Then that way I know if there's anything that's faulty moving forward that I did everything, you know, correct. Sometimes if you leave certain brackets out the way things are engineered, it could crack something and they can say, cause it wasn't restrained or whatever, so. There is some room for error too. You know, I would have to say you have an eighth inch to play with because the hole that you're going into is much larger. So if you get your measurements pretty close, you could see I, I hit all four of these with no issues at all. She's tight getting in there. Had a hard time getting this one started. Kind of hitting it at a weird angle here, but Well, there you go. It took me about a half hour to do all this and I did have to read through some of the directions, but it's pretty user friendly. You know, all these brackets, it's two, two bolts there, clamp down there. Those swedge down inside these pockets. And um, we'll check this out here. This is where I wasn't going to put these bolts in because I don't particularly like to drill through, you know, things if I don't have to, but I wanted to show a how-to video on to do it all the way. So I figured we better get it installed correctly. So there is a template. I use a tape measure. You can also use a template. And like I said, there's holes in here that you have to hit through there. So I drilled down through a total of four of those, tightened them up, uh, things super sturdy. And then up here is where those rubber grommets go. I'm gonna have to get a, a rivet gun you could probably use a self-tapping screw, but I don't want to mess up the paint finish so it starts rusting, you know, prematurely. But uh, as far as uh, stability, it's exactly what I was looking for. You know, the flex you see 
is actually the bed flexing. There's a bunch of things that you can purchase in the future. These are for different accessories, holding shovels, chainsaws, all kind of different things. And it is made by Can-Am. You know, I tend to try to stick with name brand stuff that's made for the equipment. You know, you spend tens of thousands of dollars on it. Why booger things up? So we're gonna move on to these mirrors here. I'm hoping that this is pretty fast. I believe they just go right there. So we'll see what we got. So this is the mirror kit that I chose to purchase. Uh, this is the cheaper of the two. I believe these are a couple hundred dollars made by Canyon. So the unboxing of this is styrofoam, Bunch of stuff that I can't read. It's in different languages. There, here we go. Some uh, English here. For safety reasons. Bunch of safety things. Uh, it seems like it's packaged pretty well. Comes with some hardware. Some metal brackets. Sticker. These look like brackets for the side of the unit. What I do not see so this is, this is my kind of accessory. I like figuring things out. So let me tear into this and then we'll see uh, what we can come up with. So this is the tricky part. It does come with a universal bracket kit. So it has a bunch of different things for different models and whatnot. But uh, this one comes with just this bracket and it, it appears it's just going to bolt right to the side of this, which is good because I do not see any directions on the, in this side of this unit here. So uh, what I did notice is going to be a little bit tricky is this is a kind of like a mirror like on a car, spring loaded on like this cantilever. So I'll show you here these pins on how to put this together. And you have to put it together exactly the way it's designed or it will not pivot correctly. So it comes with a whoops, comes with a pin. And it comes with these two plastic bushings. So all this has to go in in sequence. This is universal. So don't believe it matters if it is up or down. I'm trying to get this as close as possible so you can see. So here's the bracket. There's a spring that goes inside there, and that's going to be the tensioning for when it pivots on this knuckle here. So this dowel rod there has to slide down in that groove and then it has a place to sit inside there. And then these two bushings, plastic little bushings, have to slide inside of these carriers. You can't push them all the way in, you just gotta get them started. Like that, so they're sitting just like that. And then you have to drop this down inside of there. Now it's spring-loaded. So you have to push this in to get those bushings to line up. And this is where it's a little bit tricky because you have to get this lined up before you can put the main support pin down through. So I'm gonna push this one across and get it started. So I've got that one started. Well, I gotta get this other side started. Then push in like this. Now they're both started. So the bushing has it spring loaded now. I don't want to move it because I don't have the main pin down through there. But now we'll drop this main pin down through and that holds the bushings in place. And then this is two 10 millimeters as well but you'll need two sockets on each end since it's recessed. So it's got a lock nut on it. It's more of just retaining those bushings in place so they don't pop out. So I wouldn't go crazy on tightening this. So now that that's in place, you can see that this is spring-loaded. So it'll bolt on the side of the unit through two bolts through the door. And then if you hit something, it'll bounce back 
or if you're going in a tight area, just roll them back so you don't damage it uh, from the get-go. So we're on the home stretch here. That universal uh, kit with all the different bolts has these uh, bolts in it with Loctite on it. So whenever you put this together, they don't vibrate off. This is the driver's side. And then, like I said, this model here, you just slide it through. Get your 10 millimeter ready and then line it up. You wouldn't get too tight yet until you get the other one started. So now that that's started, we'll just run these all the way in. Well, there you go, guys. Got the mirrors on, the passenger side is identical to the driver's side, just flip-flopped. So the trickiest part for me was holding all this and spring-loading that and getting those bushings in, but everything works out perfect. Um, just the way I planned on it working, uh, I didn't want to spend 300 and some dollars. I do offer a better mirror, but these ones are good enough for what we're looking to accomplish here. And this headache rack, it's exactly what I thought it was going to be, so I'm pretty pleased with that. I did end up putting all the hardware in, drilled through the bed. The only thing I got to do is get that uh, rubber grommet riveted up there in case something big would slam up front and bust a window. Thank you guys for sticking around, checking out how I put the headache rack on and the mirrors. Uh, I'm very pleased with how everything worked out. I think I have less than a, an hour total tied up in this. So, you know, don't be afraid to tackle things yourself. It's just, you know, just take your time. It was basic mechanic tools and everything seemed to fit up perfect because it was made by Can-Am. So I, I choose to purchase things that are mainly made by the manufacturer that I buy. You know, I, I may buy some other stuff in the future that might not be an actual Can-Am product, but it tends to be the engineering works out perfect when you purchase something through Can-Am for Can-Am. So, like always, we appreciate being here, and I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas. Take care.